Hi, today we're going to explore a scalping strategy using the VWAP or the volume weighted average price and we're going to backtest this strategy on the Bitcoin market using three years of data. The backtest will be done using an algorithm written in Python that you can download from the link in the description of this video. So why VWAP? First because someone from the comment section requested this and when I tried it in the algorithm I was surprised by the results that we are going to review together. There's another reason that VWAP might be powerful for algorithmic trading. VWAP value is independent from the time frame we are using, meaning if we change time frames, the VWAP value remains the same simply because of the way it is calculated. I will avoid mathematical details here, but this feature is advantageous for algorithmic trading because we have one less parameter to worry about during optimization. The importance of VWAP also is that it can provide dynamic support and resistance values and it's extremely helpful also for algorithmic trading. Since one of the big challenges of these programs is to guess how we can fix our take profit and stop loss values. So this is good for algorithmic trading and when I tried this strategy on a back test over three years of data it showed large return percentage which makes it a good investment of our attention and time. So we will write all of it in Python and we will explain the simple approach and maybe I'm intending to further explore this indicator in future videos as well. So first we will use 15 minutes time frame for the Bitcoin US dollar trading price and we are including two indicators, the 100 EMA and the VWAP. This example shows both curves hovering around the price movements and when we have a certain number of candles trading below or above the 100 EMA we can conclude that we have a downtrend or an uptrend respectively. At the same time, in an uptrend, we're only looking for buying positions and in a downtrend, we're only looking for selling positions. This trend behavior is also confirmed if the candles are trading below or above the VWAP curve as well. So again, we are looking for buying positions when the candles are trading above the 100 EMA and the VWAP curve and we're looking for selling positions when the candles are trading below the EMA and the VWAP curve as well. And the entry point for our positions is triggered when the price is close enough within a certain fixed distance to the VWAP curve. For example, here the price is trading below the curves, both curves, so we are in a downtrend, and at the same time, the price is getting close within a certain distance limit to the VWAP curve so we are triggering a selling signal. We have another signal right here so the price is trading below both curves so we are in a downtrend and at the same time the price candles got too close or close enough to the VWAP curve so we triggered those purple points that are our selling signal. So we can see that these two signals are very good signals. This one is a false signal so we are below the curves we consider or the algorithm considers that we are in a downtrend and we got close enough within a certain limit to the VWAP curve, so we are triggering a selling position. This one here was a false signal. So in brief, this signal algorithm uses three adjustable variables or parameters, the number of candles to be considered below or above the EMA and the VWAP, so we define our downtrend or uptrend, like how many candles we will be testing to be below or above these curves to confirm a downtrend or an uptrend. And these are two parameters, the number of candles below or above the EMA and the number of candles below or above the VWAP. They can of course be one same parameter if you want to simplify the algorithm. And the third parameter is the maximum distance to consider that the price is close enough to the VWAP. So we're calling this the maximum distance close to VWAP or something like this. And for this video, the stop loss distance is directly related to the ATR and the take profit is obtained by multiplying the stop loss with a certain ratio that we will define when we are optimizing our code. So now we can write all of this in Python and see how it all behaves. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. We will be using a file of Bitcoin US dollar trading prices, the 15 minutes candles, asking price between 5-8-2019 and 29th of April 2022. And this cell is all about putting the time column into an index, just adjusting the format and using it as an index. I'm not going through the details here because it's not directly related to the algorithm we are explaining. Then I'm using the pandas TA package to uh, compute the VWAP, store it into a column into our data frame, 
and the exponential moving average with the length 100 for the moment. And this part defines a new column or a new signal, which I called EMA signal. This is where the algorithm is counting how many back candles, how many candles we have under or above the EMA curve, just to define if we have a downtrend or an uptrend. So here I'm taking six candles. Whenever we have six consecutive candles falling below the EMA curve, we consider that the EMA signal is a selling signal in this case. And the opposite is true. If they are above the curve, we have a positive or an uptrend signal in this case. So we will put this signal into a new column into our data frame called the EMA signal. And we are following the same approach also with the VWAP curve. But this time I'm using only three candles just to increase the number of uh, the signals we are getting during our trading. Remember, if you put very strict conditions, you're not going to have a lot of signals uh, out of your trading system. So since we are testing over three years of data, I would like to have a lot of trading opportunities just to statistically evaluate the uh, algorithm we are describing. So here I decreased the back candles parameter to three, meaning if we have three consecutive candles below or above the VWAP curve, it is a confirmation if we have a downtrend or an uptrend working along also with the EMA signal. I'm adding the signal as the uh, new column VWAP signal into our data frame. And then we are merging all of this into a function called total signal just to confirm if we have an uptrend we are putting two conditions that the EMA signal would be equal to two. And at the same time, the VWAP signal is also signaling an uptrend, which is equal to two. You might want to add other conditions here, checking if you have an engulfing pattern, a shooting star or something else you can experiment on. For the moment, for this video, I'm keeping things as simple as possible just to see what is the VWAP going to achieve within a simple strategy. So if we have an uptrend, we will be looking for um, buying position but at the same time we need that the curves be very close to the price as we have described in the algorithm so for this we are going to test the distance between the candles or the price where the price is trading and the curves of the VWAP so we're checking the minimum absolute distance between the VWAP curve and the high of the current candle and also the absolute distance between the VWAP curve and the low of the current candle. So in other words, we are looking for the closest point of the current candle to the VWAP. And we are measuring this distance if this distance is below or equal to a parameter that I'm defining, which is my close distance. So when the price is closer than this distance limit to the VWAP curve, we're going to consider we have a valid signal. And here I put it to 100. This is going to be dependent on the uh, currency you are trading and the price of the currency that you are trading. Because here, for example, in the Bitcoin case, it's a difference in US dollar units. So it's uh, within a hundred dollars unit, you should be close to the VWAP curve. While if you would be trading Ethereum or something else, you might want to change this one to make it more optimized for the currency you are trading. And at the same time, if it happens that we have a down signal, both using the EMA signal and the VWAP signal, we're looking for selling position and we are going to check the same condition, like the closest price, the closest point of the current candle to the VWAP curve. Is it the high or the low of the candle? Whichever is closer, we're going to check if it's within a certain distance limit to the VWAP curve. And if it's the case, we're returning one, which is a selling signal. And all of these are combined into a one parameter that we're going to call total signal. I'm going to store this into our data frame called total signal. And this is going to be our triggering signal for selling and buying positions. And at this point, we can visualize our signals on a chart. So I'm using those three cells that I'm not going to explain because we've been explaining these so many times in previous videos. Most importantly, we can see that we can plot our candles along with those purple points that are valid signals. These are selling signals because they are located above uh, the uh, candles. And this one is also a selling signal. This one also is a selling signal. We can try a different slice just for the sake of Trying, let's add some zeros here. And uh, I would say 1,900. So we'll have 400 candles. 
and here also we can see that we have our selling signals because we are in a downtrend these are buying signals because we are above the curves and at the same time we are close enough to this to the curves so you can see that we can have all signals as well using these uh, parameters but anyway there's only one way to find out if this is a valid uh, system it's by backtesting and for backtesting we're going to define first of all the ATR just to use it as a stop loss uh, indicator so I'm going to run this the ATR at the same time I'm using the backtesting library or package so we are going to define parameters here the stop loss ATR a distance is going to be 0 0.8 times the current ATR and the take profit stop loss ratio is 2 in other words the take profit distance is twice as big as large as the uh, stop loss distance and this is how we can define our stop loss and take profit when we have a signal that is equal to 2 which means it's a buying signal and at the same time we don't have any other open trades because we are allowing one trade at a time here at the same time we have this so we have um, signal equal to 1 and at the same time we are allowing one trade at a time then we can trigger either a buying a position or a selling position taking into account of course the uh, stop loss and the take profit values I'm starting with a cash of 100,000 and the margin of 1 over 5 so it's a leverage of 5 the reason I put 100,000 is the high price of the Bitcoin so if you want your system to uh, keep running and not wipe the account within two losing trades you need to have enough money to cover up because of the high price of the Bitcoin and these are the results of our trading system we can see that we have um, like 10,000 percent of returns so if we started with 100,000 we have an equity final of around 10 million dollars after three years using the Bitcoin while the hold buy and hold percentage is only 248 percent so I know a lot of people made money out of Bitcoin they had a lot of Bitcoin in their wallet and then the Bitcoin prices spiked up and they made a lot of money using this trading strategy they would have made much more which is a good indicator that if you compare it with a simple investing strategy this algorithm is a very good one now if we want to plot to see the um, stability of uh, the equity during all of these years I'm going to plot the equity curve we can see that the algorithm worked extremely well for a certain period of time but I think for the last year this is like a year or 10 months almost worth of time it's not really doing as well this is the problem with algorithms usually they work during a couple of years and then you have some periods where they struggle because they lack this dynamic thinking uh, to try to adapt to the current market so the way we built these algorithms is a very passive way we put fixed parameters and we try to apply these parameters over three years which is not the best way to do it because it worked for two years and then the last year didn't work well but anyway all in all it's a very good strategy it's a very good system that worked for a very long period of time I mean for two years it was working perfectly fine and of course you can add any uh, additional filters any additional indicators to improve this and to make it less risky okay this is it for this video I hope you guys liked it I really like the VWAP idea thank you for your comments it was something that is coming from the comments section again and if you liked it please don't forget to like and subscribe it would be of great support for this channel until our next video trade safe and see you next time